From the city to the farm, corn and corn ethanol are hot topics for anyone concerned about the future of our liquid fuel supply. With so much information, and misinformation, in the news today, I thought it would be a good idea to discover how two groups of people, concerned non-farmers in the Twin Cities and actual corn farmers in rural Minnesota, feel about the corn ethanol issue. Through these interviews, I hope to sort out truth from myth and fact from fiction. Probably solar. Well, ideally wind, okay. after wind then solar and hydro, and I think the conservation piece is the, the biggest piece. What ethanol is is a carbon recycler within the environment. We take carbon out of the air, we take sunshine and water that falls from the sky, resources that are completely here already and we combine them with our technology and our skill and our dedication to make something that the country needs. I think a really strong renewable resource would be wind or solar power because it doesn't take in anything, it just produces. I think probably wind. Wind. Wind, wind is the, and of course wind is everywhere. Minnesota Morris University is doing a research on using wind power to generate and make a, a renewable nitrogen source. Uh, nitrogen is a big fertilizer for us uh, in corn production. So we can kind of tie in that way. Well, then all of a sudden our energy efficiency on producing corn gets to be better if we can use renewable source for one of our inputs uh, in fertilizer. I don't really see any benefits to it. I think it's really a big scam. Helps bring jobs in our community. To help clean the air, number one. Where a lot of communities around us have started to shrink. So it keeps our area of the state and our area of the world healthy. Uh, number two, it replaces our dependence on foreign oil. It's, uh, it's something that's going to be here every year. Farmers are going to grow it year after year. Uh, you know, it's something I like with oil. That's uh, a supply that is de decreasing every year, and there's no way to make it, you know, fast again. It takes a long time to make that. So, the idea of producing fuel from um, a crop, I think, is a really interesting idea. Problems when you're growing food that could be used to feed people for like energy. I mean, if there's no other way to do it, like I guess ethanol would be okay, but... How could you be using corn in a better way to feed people and that, that's kind of where I get morally subject to it? We're, we're growing the same amount of acres as we did before ethanol. We actually have a surplus of corn that leaves our state as corn. Uh, what a lot of people don't realize is the distillers that's uh, part of the process of making ethanol is sold back to farmers for livestock feeds. We have enough for food, enough for feed uh, for livestock and animals, and enough for uh, ethanol. Considering so. how much land has to be used to produce ethanol uh, makes it prohibitive because we're taking away land from producing food. It takes over like a lot of, well I guess like a lot of growing space, like I mean couldn't we be growing food? We're going by leaps and bounds right now on what we can yield off one acre of land. plenty of corn for feeding animals and livestock, feeding people, and for fuel. I've heard like bad things about like ethanol and stuff. In terms of availability and uh, price value right now, oil continues to be our best option. Minnesota has the largest number of E85 stations across the nation. It's very viable in our state. We hope to be the model for other states. Anything that has a low return on investment, uh, low return on energy investment, so like corn, has uh, about a 1.1 to 1 
return. So that's a pretty heavy investment of energy to get more energy out of it. And those numbers are based on, uh, I, I wouldn't call flawed research, but you got to base things on sound science, not have a, a, an agenda when you're coming up with those numbers. I've read that, like they still produce pretty much, like, well, a lot of carbon, a lot more than you'd get from sun energy, from wind energy. We take carbon dioxide out of the air to make the corn that goes into ethanol. The oil companies don't want us using it, so they put propaganda out. I guess the politics over petroleum are really dangerous. We're running out of it. The U.S. peaked in oil production in the 70s, and we've been consuming other countries' oil since then. A lot of people live in really risky situations and there's a lot of really dangerous things that arise, wars that come up from who has control over petroleum. The reliance on foreign sources of, of oil is a huge problem not only for the environment but perhaps more importantly for our national security. The things that it emits back into the environment are really dangerous and not translatable to something that we can really neutralize, they just kind of stick in the environment. Like why are we in Iraq, why, why, why is there problems with the Middle East, like Venezuela, like, it's just, it's too big of a like political deal. Right now, most issues have at least two sides. Before assuming anything, it's wise to check where and from whom the facts are coming. On ethanol, I learned a lot from speaking with people that actually grow corn and produce the fuel. I encourage you to do the same.